We've got more document methods to cover this week. One of them is old. Real old. Old is... Well, it's been around a long time. The other is newer and is another helpful tool available to those looking to move away from jQuery and work more in vanilla, i.e. plain old new framework, JavaScript. First up, we've got document.getElementById, which has existed since at least the equivalent of JavaScript's Cretaceous era. You probably know how to use this one, and if you don't, you can probably guess just by the method name, but let's cover it anyway. Document.getElementById grabs the first element in the DOM that has an ID matching the selector you provide. Note, HTML elements should never share IDs, so there shouldn't be any concern about conflicts. If you have a later element with the same ID, you should rewrite it to use a unique ID and instead share a class with your first element. Then use query selector all, which we covered last week. Note that unlike query selector and query selector all, we don't use identifiers like pound sign or dot because we're not differentiating between IDs and classes. We're only going to be looking at IDs. Here's document.getElementById in action, along with some HTML to work with. This will log the element, showing that, yes, we've gained access to it. That's not very interesting, so below the console.log, let's add another JavaScript feature, an event listener. Remember dot .click in jQuery, or the more dynamic code-friendly dot .on click? We can do that right in vanilla.js pretty easily. Here's the code. Let's try that. And there we go. This code's pretty straightforward. We're listening for a specific event, click, and then passing in an anonymous function as a callback to be executed when the event happens. This function can take an event argument, which gives you all kinds of information about the target element and the click event, but that's outside of the scope of this particular tutorial. Want me to cover more about JS events? Just reply and let me know. As with query selectors, we can create a shortcut for document.getElementById like this. And then we can use the shortcut like this. Save that. Refresh. And our click works. And our cancel works. One thing that's important to point out, all of this is only working because our script tag is below our body tag. If we move our script into the header, the JavaScript will execute before the DOM is finished loading. Go ahead and try it if you'd like to see console errors. That's no good when you're trying to work on DOM elements, obviously. jQuery's solution was the venerable document.ready, but we've got vanilla.js alternatives that'll work all the way back to IE8. If you need to go back further than that, there are workarounds, but they get more complex. And it's plausible at that point that just use jQuery might be the viable solution for your project. The benefits of backwards compatibility might outweigh jQuery's relatively heavy footprint. Anyway, here's the ES5 way to wait for the DOM to load before executing anything. Let's take a look. There we go. And here's the even cleaner, easier to read ES2015 version. This one should work with any browser that supports ES2015 natively, which is all the modern ones, and will of course also transpile using something like Babel. This should give our text a little breathing room. Yep. That's it for this week. Next week we'll... I actually have no idea what I'm writing about next week just yet. There's a bunch of stuff I could choose from. Have thoughts? Just reply and let me know. See you next time.